What's up everyone? In this video, we will be adding authentication and authorization into our application. So I'm gonna get started in my server. And the first file I'm gonna to go to is tokens within the utils folder. And in here, I'm going to create a new function. I'll go ahead and create it under create forgot password token, and it will be called create token pair. For this function, we're gonna to have to go in, into our environment variables and add in two new um, variables. So the first variable is going to be access token secret, and the second one will be a secret for the refresh token. So with those added, go ahead and navigate back to tokens. And within create token pair, we're going to create an access token signer and a refresh token signer. Then we will create the refresh claims for the refresh token. And I'll have to import string converter. Then I'll create the access token claims. So for this, I'm gonna to have to create a new struct here for the access token. And that's just gonna have an ID, which will be a uint. Now we need to create our access token and our refresh token. Then we'll create a token pair and assign the access token and refresh token respectively. And at the bottom here, we will return the address to the token pair and nil. And now here, Whenever we create this token pair, we want to store it in a Redis cache. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to write up the code for that. So we need to go into storage and create a new file. I'm going to call it redis.go. And the package here is storage. Now I'm just going to need to import um, redis from go redis. And then I need to get that package. Then I'm gonna create a variable called Redis, which will be a Redis client pointer. And then I'll create a function for initializing Redis. Now I'm gonna go into main.go so that we can actually initialize that. So here underneath initializing other storage options, we're going to say storage.initialize Redis. And we can go back into tokens now. Now, after we've created our token pair, we just need to store the refresh token in the Redis cache. So we'll import storage here, and then we need to create a variable called background context. So I'm just gonna do that up here, and we just need to import context for that. So what we're saying here is that we just wanna set the refresh token as a key and for the value, we're just gonna set true as a string just to signify that it is within the Redis cache. And here, I'm just setting this to expire or delete from the cache five minutes after the refresh token is no longer valid. Now, because our access token expires every 24 hours, we're gonna have to create a function to refresh this access token and what we're really gonna do is we're just going to refresh both the refresh token and access token. And whenever that happens, we'll just get rid of the refresh token from our Redis cache. So for that, I'm gonna create a new function. I'm gonna call this refresh token. And for this, I'll have to import iris. Beneath this, I'll create a new struct for the refresh token input. And then within this function, we need to get the verified token. We need to stringify that token. And then we need to get that token from our Redis cache. If the token error is not nil, we'll send back 404. And if the value from our cache is not equal to a stringified true, we're gonna send back the status code of forbidden. Now, if we get to this point, it means that the refresh token was valid. So we need to delete it from our cache. We need to get the user ID from the claims of the token. And then we need to create a token pair. And then we'll send that token pair back to the user. All right, so with these created, I'm gonna go into main.go and 
add some stuff here. All right, so we need to create an access token verifier, just like we did with reset token verifier. So I'm just gonna add this underneath the reset token verifier. And we're gonna need to do the same thing for a refresh token verifier. So I'm gonna add that underneath the access token verifier. And then we're going to create a new extractor for the refresh token. So back in our prior function, this refresh token function, we were able to get the verified token here from our context. So this is just going to allow us to do that. So I'm going to add that here. And now we need to go and use these different middlewares in our routes. So down beneath notifications, I'm going to create a new route for the refresh token function. And I'm going to assign the refresh token verifier middleware to act upon that route. And before we add the access token verifier middleware to any of these other routes, I'm going to create a new file within utils called middleware. Within this, I need to add these imports. So what this function is gonna do is it's going to get the ID from the URL parameters, and then it's going to get the claims from the access token, and it's gonna make sure that those are the same. So if they aren't the same, we're gonna send a status code of status forbidden. Otherwise, we'll just say context.next. We're gonna call that. So we'll go ahead and save that, and then over here, we'll use it on any of these routes where the user ID is getting passed into the parameters and that same user ID is going to be um, from the current user. So let's get started on adding these middlewares to these different routes. So here for the saved properties of a particular user, we need to have the access token verifier middleware and the user ID middleware. Same thing for the saved properties. Same thing for patching a user's saved properties. We're gonna do the same thing for the push token. Same thing for notifications. And the same thing for um, contacted properties. Okay, now down here in property, we're gonna do the same thing for getting properties by user ID. For deleting a property, we can only use the access token verifier middleware. So because we can't verify that the person making the delete request is the actual owner of the property through the use of this user ID middleware, we have to go into the delete property function and do that here. So within this function, before we delete the property, I'm going to get it from our database and then I'm gonna make sure that the user ID within this property is equal to the ID from the access token claims. And I just need to import JWT here. And if all of that checks out, then we will proceed in deleting the property. And here, I think I just need to add V12 right there. And this is all good. So now let's go back to main.go and continue adding middleware. For updating a property, we're going to be doing the same thing. And we have to go into update property. Now here, underneath this property variable, we are just going to check that the user ID of the property is equal to the claims ID from that token. And we'll save that, go back to main.go. We'll do the same thing here for patching an apartment. We'll do the same thing here for patching an apartment. And we'll go into update apartments and we'll make sure that the user ID and claims ID are the same. And go back here. For creating a review, we just need to add the access token verifier middleware just to make sure that a user is actually logged in and has an account. And we will go ahead and add the access token verifier middleware for creating a conversation. And we need to go into this function and we'll need to make sure that the sender ID is equal to the claims ID within the token. 
So underneath reading this JSON, we will add in that logic to compare the sender ID and the claims ID. Now go back to main.go and we'll do something similar here for getting a conversation ID. And we'll go ahead and add this logic when there is a result here. Now for getting a conversation by a user ID, we can add in the user ID middleware as well as that access token verifier middleware. And for creating a message, we will just add in the access token verifier middleware. And then here within create message, we're gonna do the same thing that we did for create conversation. So we just need to make sure that the sender ID is equal to the claims ID. And with all of these added, we still haven't sent back the tokens whenever we are logging in the user. So we need to go and do that. Let's go into user.go. And down at the bottom of this function, I'm just going to create a new function to return a user. So I'll create that function here. It's just going to get a token pair and then it will send back the user based upon the passed in user and the context. Now we just need to implement this every time that we are returning a user within our functions above. So let's go to those. All right, so here's an example. All right, so that looks like it hit every function where we are returning a user. And with that done, we are done with this main server. So I need to go ahead and open up a new instance of VS Code. And we need to go to our chat server. So let's go there. And for this, I'm just gonna go into index.ts. And here, I'm gonna to need to add in that access token secret to my environment variables. Let me go back here. And then I'm also going to need to install a new package for JWTs. So we'll go ahead and say yarn add JSON web token. And we need to add in the types for that as well. All right. Now let's import JWT from JSON Web Token. And I'm going to go create a new type for the JWTs. So this is what a JWT will look like. And really all that we'll care about is the ID here. So let's go back into index and let's import JWT from our types. And then we need to go down into here where we are connecting. I'm just gonna say uh, console.log new connection. And then All right, I'm just doing this for whenever we deploy our server, but um, what we really care about is whenever we are sending a message. So whenever we send a message, we're going to send the access token in this auth object, and here we'll just be getting that token. And then once we have that token, we need to verify that the token matches 
with our access token secret. And based upon that, we will take the proper actions. So I'm just gonna move everything that we have here into this function. And then within this function, I'll say if there is an error, we will return. And then I'll create a new condition so that if the decoded JWT ID is equal to the sender ID, we will do all of this other stuff. So let's go ahead and move this up. And that should be it for our chat server. Now we need to go into our React Native application and change our mutations and queries so that they add the access token to their requests. So let's go and open up a new VS Code window. And let's head there. All right, so now that I am in my application code, I'm actually just going to go into my user types first and modify this so that we add an access token and a refresh token. So those will both be required strings. So with that done, let's go into our hooks and then our mutations so that we can add in our access token to these requests. So within here, where we are creating this create conversation function, we need to add another parameter here for the token. And when we make this post request, we need to add in some headers. And then for the authorization header, we just need to add in a bearer token. And that token is going to be the passed in token. And we will pass that token in using our user. So const user equals use user from our hooks. And then here where we are creating our conversation after this object, we'll say user dot access token. Now let's go into use create message mutation and do the same thing. All right, let's do the same thing for create property mutation. We'll do the same thing with create review mutation. Go ahead and do the same thing with deleting the property.
Now let's go into edit apartments mutation and do the same thing. Do the same thing for editing a property. We'll do the same thing for saving a property. All right, so now that we've done this for all of the mutations, we have to do it for the queries now. So let's go do it for use contacted properties query. Do it for use conversations query. Do it for use my properties query. Do it for use saved properties query. and do it for use selected conversations query. All right, so that's gonna be it for the mutations and the queries. Now we need to go and modify some of our other backend requests or our function calls. So let's go into our user service and we'll need to do something similar to some of these functions. So here for alter push token, we are now going to be taking in an access token so this will be token is equal to push token. And 
here, we need to specify that the headers are authorization, bearer, then the access token. Now we need to do the same thing here for alter allows notifications. And let's go and create another service for refreshing our token pair. So I'm just going to call this tokens.ts. Here we'll need to import Axios and endpoints. And shoot, I don't even think we've added this endpoint to our constants. So we'll have to do that first. And I'm just going to add it right here. So we'll have refresh and then the refresh token endpoint. And then down here, we'll create a new endpoint called refresh tokens. And while we're at it, I'm going to change some of these other endpoints. So for create property endpoint in a prior video, we got rid of the word create at the end. So let's change that here. Create conversation. So here at the end, we need to get rid of this. The reason we're doing that is because on iOS, it will redirect if we do that. And when it redirects, it loses the header information. And the last one is create message. All right, so with that done, let's go back into tokens and let's create our function. So we'll create refresh tokens. It needs to take a refresh token in as an argument. And then we just need to call the refresh tokens endpoint, passing in the refresh token. And that will return us a token pair. Now let's go into use user. And here for alter push token, just add in user.access token. Same thing for Alter allows notifications, and here we need to do the same thing. And here, because our users on our devices currently don't have an access token, just comment this out for the catch block. All right, now I'm going to go into the saved screen and just fix something. So here, saved properties refetch. Whenever we log out. Um, and then log back in. It doesn't really refetch the um, contacted properties either. So that's a problem. So we'll just do this as well. So that's it for the save screen. Now let's go back into app.tsx and make some changes here. So user object, this is going to be of the user type. And here for socket.auth, we need to set the access token. So within this use effect hook, we are going to fetch the user a new token pair. So a new access token and a new refresh token based upon their current refresh token. So we'll do that right here. We'll need to import refresh tokens. And then here, I'm just going to cut this out for a minute and we'll say if new tokens, then we want to assign the user object, a the new access token and the new refresh token. Then we'll say secure store dot set item async to the user. And then we can set the user object right here. All right, so that's gonna be it for the modifications. Now let's go and test this thing out.